Hey y'all, Coach Jennifer Fight here, coming out of Deuteronomy chapter 15, and we are talking about the year of release. Now, we're coming out of the Septuagint translation of this uh, scripture, because we've done classes on this year of release before out of the Septuagint and found some additional information in that book. So we're going to use this translation today. Um, I'm having to rush this video out, guys, uh, because I believe I may have missed something extremely important here as far as um, what, it, what it means um, to have the year of release here in the year 2023. Um, I may put, go into the math on this, but I really don't plan to go into it in this particular video um, because we've done it so many times and it's, we, we we're pretty sure of it. We plan to sharpen the pencil and we'll probably we'll probably all do so after this video to make sure that we're in the right year because I believe what we're going to learn here is that this is the year of release and in fact we may be um, within the season or, or I should say we may be approaching the season of this um, global release, global release. Um, we just did a video on how Jacob's trouble ended in the year 2022. And uh, if I was the father, of course, I would have waited to see who was Jacob too. Meaning I would have waited to see who kept the feast days and, you know, throughout the year too. And then, you know, here that we are in 2023 being the year of release, those people who were obedient and following the rules, you know, it would be the time when they would receive their stuff. Um, yeah. Whew, this is pretty deep here, guys. Um, I'm actually working on a bigger, more important video than this one, actually. Um, this is actually an afterthought that I was going to put at the end of that video. But let, let's just jump into it. Um, um, Deuteronomy 15. And let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, blessed be thy name. Father, I will come to you today, Lord, asking that you... We'll open up all communication pathways such that we can hear your word and hear your meaning of your understanding, especially in these times, so that we can know what it is that we are expected to do. Father, in your son's name we pray. Amen. And so be it. All right, so we're looking here at verse 1. It says, Every seven years thou shalt make a release. Now, we're here in the seventh year. And like I said, I don't want to go into a whole lot of math, but I can easily come over here to wikipedia.com and type in Smith the Year. And then I can scroll down to see when the last known Smith the Years were. They're getting these from the um, books of like the Book of Maccabees. And so we can use this information to calculate what year is a Smita year. And no doubt the year 2023 is a Smita year. And just for a cherry on top, you know, we've done videos on this. Um, the way our father made it work out, you know, all we have to do is put in the year that we're in and divide by seven. If it comes out evenly, we are in a Smita year. Praise our father in heaven. Hallowed be his name. But anyway, let's look back over here in verse two. It says, and this, the ordinance of the release, thou shalt remit every private debt which thy neighbor owes thee, and thou shalt not ask payment of it from thy brother, for it has been called a release to the Lord thy God. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to put my glasses on here. Um, but... It's talking about this ordinance of release. This is a commandment, a statute, a precept. Um, this is what we're supposed to do every seven years. We're supposed to have, what is a every seven years we're supposed to remit every private debt. Okay, which means personal debt. What what I personally owe, what you personally owe. What who is not talking about is like banks and you know big corporations. It's that private debt which thy neighbor owes thee, which thee owes me. Okay. So anything that I am owed, thou shalt not ask payment of it from thy brother. For it has been called a release to the Lord thy God. Meaning if somebody owes me, then everything that they owe me. I'm going to have to basically just wipe away that debt. And it's a big deal. We learn here in this chapter that, you know, this really means something back in the day, because if you lend somebody some money um, and this meet the year came up, or I should say that the sabbatical year came up, well, everything that you was owed at that point will become null and void. 
Now look at verse 3. It says, Of a stranger thou shalt ask it again, whatsoever he has of thine. But to thy brother thou shalt remit his debt to thee. Now, so this is very important because it's, you know, creating separation between who's who. And I wanted to go over and try to get another translation of it. Um, Chris is working on the internet right now. Maybe you'll get that up and that we can go in and look at some other translations to see um, what it says differently. But in the meantime, let's drop down here. A few verses um, we're going to skip over a lot of these including like there in verse 9 where it's talking about you know don't be stingy towards our brother because it is the year of release be like yeah no I can't lend you anything this year because you know you're not gonna pay it back next year he says not to do that in verse 9 but anyway we're going to come all the way down here because we do want to touch on verse 12. Again, we want to see those other translations but looking at verse 12 it says and if thy brother a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman be sold to thee. He shall serve thee six years, and in the seventh year thou shalt send him out free from thee. So now here is something additional. This is talking about Hebrews and how they are supposed to be released in this seventh year. Now, we don't want to get into race here, at least a racial debate, but we have to stick to facts here because what we're talking about, let me say what we could be talking about here is um, the prophecy given to Abraham and the 400 years that these people are expecting. And that's why, you know, you hear the excitement in my voice. I'm trying to hold it back and be tranquil. But what we're talking about here is the release of not only the debts, but of these people here. These Hebrew people could go down in this uh, sabbatical year, which like we proved a few minutes. Well, we didn't prove it. We just showed it is the year 2023. You come back here and you look and you see where there was a smith the year that started in the year 162 BCE. 162 BC. They're getting that from the book of Maccabees. Well, all we have to do is put in the math, 162 plus one year, because there was no such thing as year zero. And then we can just jump ahead sabbatical years, uh, actually 312 sabbatical years. And we find out that the year 2023 is actually a sabbatical year. So that's what we're talking about here. Now, let's check on, see if we got any internet here. We'll go to verse 12 first for grins and giggles. We see right in KJV is saying uh, Hebrew. And then when we get down to the Amplified Bible, it says Israelite. Now, to me, that's getting more closer to the truth because a Hebrew, you got to remember, is everybody, including not only all of the children of Abraham, which would you know be the Muslim races and some of the others, but you got to understand that the word Hebrew comes from Eber. Eber was the first Hebrew. So you would have to include all of these guys, children, when you're talking about um, um, uh, Hebrews, including Jokdan and, you know, Nahor and all his children, and all his other children would be Hebrews. But when you start talking about Israel or Israelite, you narrow it way down to these groups way down here. So you see, that's a huge difference. Hebrews is everybody here. Israelites is everybody here. And that's why we wanted to check the other translations to see what it says. But then when we go and look at the interlinear Bible to see what it says, we see Strong's number 5680, which is in Eber, which is talking to Eber. So what that's saying now, we, we believe the scripture is true, but what it's saying, all of the children of Eber. So we'll go back to look at our picture. So that's going to be from Shem's great grandson, Eber, and on down. But when we go back to verse 2, it's actually talking about everybody as far as this financial release is concerned. But this down here, when it's talking about these people being released, it's talking specifically about these Hebrews. And like I said, this to me seems to be pointing back to that promise that we read about in Genesis, where he was telling these people that, you know, they would serve for 400 years and then they would be released. Well, when can you expect them to be released? Anything other than a Samita year? I mean, it almost has to be this year else either. I can't, I can't dare say the Bible's wrong. It'd have to be my math is wrong. Um, and, um, I did my math independently, um, of this, what we're looking at over here in, in Wikipedia. Um, that should be noted. This is only secondary confirmation from the work we did. 
coming up with the Sumit the years. But two, you have two independent verifications saying that this is the Sumit the year. And then here we have the scripture saying that the Hebrew people are supposed to be released in the uh, sabbatical year. And even, you know, a lot of people up here. So I don't know, guys. Like I said, I, I, I believe I missed this, how close this thing could, really could be. And yeah, as Chris and I were talking about this and praying on this, you know, what we gathered, you know, praying for our Father's will, what we gathered is that we're, I'm actually also supposed to tell you about Christian's dream that he had um, here recently of a uh, meteor coming towards us he said he it looked like a moon you can hear the um dream i'll give links but he said it, it looked like a moon breaking up in the sky until he saw the real moon and realized it wasn't and he immediately thought of his uh, friends in israel his friend in israel and once he thought of warning his friend in israel he woke up from that dream so i believe that's what this is guys He's not in on this video right now, but like I said, I'll link him in, link his video in, because I believe we need to be warning um, people. I don't, I don't know exactly how this release will happen, but as far as this being the year of this release, hmm. It says, and when thou shalt send him out free from thee, thou shalt not send him out empty. And see, like, that's what we were saying over there. Let's let's look in the KJV. In verse 13 in chapter 15 says, And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. Okay, so this has been going on for, some say over 400 years, but you look at a video we did on the subject, and you find out that the first Africans or the first Hebrews that arrived here were not in, not slaves. They were not slaves. They were indentured servants. And it was only, you know, years later that the first court ruling decide that these people did not have the right to their own freedom and that's when they became slaves and so now um the timing of this more lines up with you know the time period then we're in now than what they were talking about back there in 2019 which we obviously saw none of this release but we look here in verse 14 it says and also that nation whom they shall serve will i judge and afterwards they shall come out with great substance so now this is pointing back to that other video that we were working on um coming out of the keys of enoch talking about how the sun and the earth is going through these changes and so like we said this is a supplemental video that, because we were talking about the timing in it um of you know all of this and when it is suspected to go down and i'm um, like i said i'm not sure of what will happen when but anything can happen in the year 2023 i, I will say that Look at verse 14, it says, Thou shalt give him provision for the way from thy flock and from thy corn and from thy wine. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee. Thou shalt give to him. Now, so this reminds me, first of all, of a dream my wife had. She's not here to talk about it. Um, how people were marching animals down the street to our place, you know. And But this is what this is talking about. It says that once these people are released, that they were going to get of the provisions of the flock, of the corn, of the wine for the way. The thing about this way now in 2023, we're talking about the tribulation. So this is a very, very, very long way and that's what you know Genesis is saying over there is where these people are supposed to leave with this high hand with great substance but it's all right you see down in verse 19 if we were to obey this just like the promises we we saw above if we're to, if we were to do this then those who will actually do this release probably willingly will receive these blessings will you know what does it say? It shall not be seen hard to thee when they are sent out from thee, because has served thee six years according to the annual hire of a hireling. So the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all things whatsoever thou mayest do. So in other words, those that are treating these Hebrews white, right will be blessed because that's what this is talking about. If we were to share with these people, you know, bless these people, um, especially in this time when we have this substance then we can expect blessings but the same is the opposite is true too so guys if any message you're getting out of this is just, we need to be doing 
charitable deeds. Um, this kind of answers a lot of questions for me as far as my personal finances. You know, I do draw lots on a lot of things I do, and he's basically been having me to dump money, like like it's just water, just giving it away, um, helping people out as much as I can, as if, like my parents used to say, um, spending money as if it's going out of style but like i said i've been praying on that so i'm not advising anybody to take my advice on it i'd advise you to pray on it but all i'm saying that as far as you know what i'm experiencing in my own life he's not saying um to save up for a rainy day he's saying um this rainy day is here you better buy an umbrella and you better get an umbrella for your friends and your neighbors too so we're going to do further studies on this. Um, I really wanted to get this out to get the ball rolling as far as conversation around this idea. So I'm going to go down in the comment section and look around and see what, you know, what we got to say. Because it's a serious business, guys, if I'm wrong. I, I kind of hope I'm wrong, you know, obviously. Because, you know, these days are approaching here. Matter of fact, let me, let me show you another verse from the Septuagint. This time we're going to come out of Leviticus 23. And, you know, I'm just going to do a search for the word release because I know what I'm looking for. It's down here in verse 36. Um, okay, we're going back all the way up to verse 33. It says, And the Lord speaking to Moses, saying, Speaking to the children of Israel, saying, On the fifteenth day of the seventh month there shall be a feast of tabernacles seven days to the Lord. And on the first day shall be a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. Seven days shall ye offer a whole burnt offerings to the Lord. And on the eighth day shall be a holy convocation to you. And ye shall offer a whole burnt offerings to the Lord. It is a time of release. Ye shall do no servile work. So, you look here, guys. It's saying... The release is the Feast of Tabernacles. This video is brought to you by the Celestial Clock Calendar, the official timepiece of the 144,000. Get your Celestial Clock Calendar at coachinafight.shop or follow the links in the description below. And before I finish editing, let me share one more thing with you guys. And that's the last time that this release was done that the last time we know about this was back in the Exodus period after they had spent 40 years in the wilderness during the Jubilee year they walked around uh, Jericho seven times and the wall fell well one thing I want to point out because there will be a lot of people expecting a lot of things to happen on about uh, April the 8th of next year and even um, Passover of next year and the tabernacles of this year um, but when you look at the pattern of um, the last exodus um, it didn't occur on first Passover but it was on second pass but it was in the second month that they started to head towards Jericho you see that it was in the second month um, so this was after the feast days had already taken place everybody was completely done with and forgot about the feast days in the second month you see down in verse 17 that it was on the seventh day of the month that they actually went up and started walking around. So that would have taken them all the way to the 14th day of the second month, which would have been around second Passover when the walls actually fell down. So for those um, looking around April to 8th for first Passover, um, we need to consider this pattern. And um, I guess I can go ahead and add this bit too. What it looks like is that, okay, we start here and then we have so many uh, 490 year periods uh, until it brings us around to uh, what would be about 1583 as far as we're concerned, somewhere around in there. And then our father allows an additional 490 year period to transpire. Well, that's easy to understand when we see that our Jubilee year ended, the last Jubilee year ended, and then we're given an additional 49 years until 2024. All of that to say in comparison to what we see over there in Jasher, this could be a six month difference, uh, give or take between April 8th, anywhere between five and seven months based on what we saw in the pattern. So, and all that to say that, you know, we have a, uh, we do have a range 
all that to say, don't be the amongst those who, you know, give up early and stop looking up because our salvation draweth nigh. But in the meantime, make sure you leave a comment, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, uh, hit the like button, uh, share this video, help get the word out, and check out some of our other videos um, in our playlists and catalogs um, to learn how it is we can prepare for this day, and then look for some we have coming up, because these um, should start to focus more on this climate change uh, and you know these Bible prophecy videos, Father willing. So see you then, Shalom.